Rick and Morty's third season is nearing its end, and recently we had the penultimate episode of the season. For a show that's typically one-off adventures and tongue-in-cheek humor, it's crammed with mysteries and thought-provoking questions. This season especially has been taking a bigger step in presenting an ongoing, tightly connected story, a consistent focus on the divorce and effect it's taken on the Smith family, the collapse of the Galactic Federation, and Evil Morty's triumphant return after stepping up and conquering the Citadel of Ricks through political means. These are just a few plot threads the show has followed up on in these past handful of episodes. And it's proven this show is capable of not just blowing our minds with existential probabilities, but with a compelling and fun story as well. The main cast is often faced with ultimatums and life-changing proposals that continue to shape and define who they are and who they will be by the end. One character in particular was presented an offer that we're not exactly sure if they took, and that's Beth. It's completely left open to interpretation, but I'm sold that it was the more interesting of the two. Let's dive into the odds and implications of her decision today on Interdimensional Intellect. Welcome back to Interdimensional Intellect on the Roundtable. I'm your host, Ashrik Vox. Rick and Morty Season 3, Episode 9, aka the ABCs of Beth, was something I was personally waiting for since the very beginning of the series. Beth coming to terms with her and Rick's relationship. This installment was a new dynamic for the show. A Rick and Beth adventure. The two revisited Froopy Land, a world Rick created for Beth as a child. A dimension seemingly to shield Beth from reality. A place for Rick to lock up his daughter and put off his parental duties. But the truth is quite the opposite. This was somewhere to put Beth to protect her peers. Beth was an extremely destructive child. Asking Rick to create weapons of mass destruction, masked as silly kindergarten as knickknacks. Beth claims this was a move to spend time with her dad, yet the audience knows what this really meant, and it's not too long before Beth herself acknowledges it. Beth is something worse than evil. She's just like her father smart, calculated, and uncaring. She's never included in on the family adventures because she's without a doubt the dangerous one. Rick can cause a society to collapse without breaking a sweat. But what is Beth capable of? We always assumed Morty and Summer's moral descent was a result of spending too much time with Rick, but now there's an additional factor. It runs in the family, and they were taught firsthand before Rick was even in the picture. In season 1, we were informed Rick was absent from Beth's life for 20 years, returning to her shortly before the series began. Even though this isn't the C-137 Beth we were equating with in the beginning, since this is an identical dimension, we can infer this Beth experienced a Rickless transition into adulthood. Throughout her early years, Rick has been a horrible father. Despite the many glimpses we've gotten of Rick showing concern for his family's well-being, he was never able to correct his parenting. He's just accepted he felt Beth and will never be a good father, and now, she's finally embraced that reality as well. Watching her call Rick out on his bad parenting and awful decisions was cathartic. After stomaching so many instances where she just remained in denial or excused his actions. However, that's not what we're going to focus on today, but rather the open-ended resolution to the episode. Rick and Beth have a heart-to-heart -heart discussion after their trip to Fruity Land. Beth suffering a crisis. Who is she? What does she do from here? Rick's remedy to her dilemma is to just flee from her life like he did. Let things go on autopilot while she does her own thing. The key to this is creating a clone, a perfect replica of her memories, personality, and capacity to love and care for her family. She can be gone for days, weeks, the rest of her life if she chose. Once she decides to come back, Rick can shut down the clone just like that, and she can fit right back into her life like a glove. Beth dwells on this opportunity and reflects on photos of her pregnancy, Summer, and Morty before stating she knows what to do. This alludes that she's chosen to stay with her family, and the very next we see of Beth is at the end of the episode, happy with her family and moving forward as a changed woman. However, is this the real Beth, or did she decide to settle on the clone? Personally, I believe it's the clone. Now, in a show where there's infinite versions of the Smith family, and likely a few clones running amok all of them, why does this matter in the grand scheme of things? If she really has left an uncanny replica in her place, what does this change? In terms of character dynamics and the structure of the show, nothing. Nothing changes. The show can go on and we'd be none the wiser, unless this is brought up again. However, in terms of the Beth of this dimension, the one we've been acquainted with the longest, this means everything. Beth is the same as Rick. We know this, but here is the defining difference. Rick could have made a clone when he abandoned Beth all those years ago, coming back in 20 years later, but he chose not to. He decided to leave her alone. 
causing her to develop immense daddy issues. Rick is a complex character. Those who have been watching and paying close attention to the little details are aware of this. He has an irrational attachment to his family. This was outright revealed in Rest and Relaxation as one of his toxic traits. I don't think he left Beth without a clone because he didn't care, but rather, he would have her live in a cold reality where her dad ditched her and become a stronger person over one where she lives a lie and gets absolutely crushed by the truth later on. That being said, Beth still suffered from Rick's absence, and I don't think she wants her children to experience that same fate. And although they still have Jerry, he's prone to being an idiot, and she knows that. That right there is an excuse for her to hide behind that she doesn't want them to be alone like she was, let alone at the hands of their misguided father. But the true reason for leaving them with a clone, Beth is selfish, possibly even more so than Rick Sanchez himself, reclaiming her freedom and living her own life, finally not settling for less because of her obligation to her children, is just something too good to pass on. I don't believe Rick staying around would have significantly changed the choices he made, but Beth's pregnancy caused the course of her life to change drastically as what usually happens in these situations. Bottom line, the Beth from this dimension is gone. Every time we see Beth from now on, it's the audience watching a clone, while the real deal is out there living the life taken from her. Will this ever be straight out confirmed? Unless this ties into the overarching story, I don't think so. Because again, in a show where there's infinite realities and countless of Beths roaming around, it's not going to change their day-to-day -day interactions. The only way I can see this being addressed again is if an antagonist like Evil Morty or Tammy catches wind of the situation and kidnaps Beth, using her as a hostage. So even if she'll be saved, drama will remain there for future seasons to explore. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I'd love to hear yours. So please, leave them in the comments section below. How do you feel about this theory? Do you agree with our analysis on Beth? Is there a chance Clone Beth could go rogue in the future despite Rick's claims? Let's get a discussion going. If you want to get the conversation going beyond the comments, follow and tweet to us at Roundtable Vids or me personally at Ostrich Vots. We'd love to see what you have to say on the subject. If you want to get even more social, join our Discord and chat up in our Rick and Morty channel, or download our official Roundtable Amino app, where you can discuss Rick and Morty and other cartoons. Also, if you had a good time watching this video and want to help us grow, consider supporting us on Patreon. Links to everything in the description. And hey, while you're in the description, why not follow the rest of our host and crew and our other social media like Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please order a like. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. Hit that bell for notifications so you never miss a Rick and Morty video from the roundtable. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Ostrich Vlots, signing out. This video has been powered by Patreon. If you want to give us some more support, head to patreon.com slash roundtablevids, become a patron, and get some awesome perks. Thanks for watching another video on the roundtable. If you want to get more involved with our community and watch videos from Let's Talk with Tom, Voxbox, and more, click the video right here. Or if you want to get some more of the animation goodness, watch some Crystal Clear or Mini Monday, click the video right here. And please, don't forget to subscribe.